in the brain, information is a network, right? So I'll mention the word prompt. Tell me what comes to mind. Um, embarrassment. It's like they're going to three different grocery stores to buy the ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. A Google doc to get this piece of information, to your inbox to get this piece of information. By the time you're done, like your bandwidth just gets yeah. burned. I have notes that are connected to hundreds of other notes and there's nothing in them. Today, I am talking to one of my favorite thinkers, writers, and podcasters, Srini Rao. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to be here, man. This is going to be a little bit of a wild ride through your mind, your first mind and second mind. Yeah. You are primarily focused on the Unmistakable Creative Podcast with many different thinkers, authors, writers, and people from every walk of life imaginable, bank robbers, drug dealers, performance psychologists, artists, authors, entrepreneurs, just people who are interesting. What occurred to me after reading your book and spending all this time in REM and, and deep work and all this stuff was that everything that we have built up until our task management tools, all our note taking apps had basically been band aids on bullet wounds because our biggest issue was the ability to easily access and organize information. So, what do we do? We build distraction blockers not to get distracted, we build note taking apps. But if you look at the average knowledge worker's workflow, it's like they're going to three different grocery stores to buy the ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Because if you have to go to a, you know, a Google Doc to get this piece of information, to your inbox to get this piece of information, to Dropbox to get something else, to the internet to get something else, that like creates so many context shifts that by the time you're done, like you actually are, your bandwidth just gets yeah. burned by yeah. doing that. So imagine if every note you've ever taken, every piece of information you have come across or every idea you've had was not only instantly accessible with zero friction, but also connected to everything else um, in a series of nodes. And that basically enhances your capacity for both divergent and convergent thinking, because you can go off in different directions with a divert, divergent part, and then you can come back and say, okay, well, I can connect this together in ways that I had never thought of before. This is their latest interface. Every note is a mem. So, you know, let's say we wanted to create a new note, right? But then if I just type your word and you can see I already had that and then so, all, so, did you see that the, so, wait, 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 go you see all the other stuff. Go a little slower here. So you're basically doing the at symbol mm -hmm. and any word. And as you're doing that in real time, it is searching, this is your mem account. Yeah, right? these are links to existing notes. So it's searching all existing mems, notes, yeah. to find anything that's related. And then kind of describe, just for someone who's seeing this for the very first time, which includes me. Um, so when you do at and, and a word mm -hmm. and you hit return, is it then inserting a link to that note right in this? So this is the this is the cool part. Remember I said you can capture ideas as they occur. So let's say for example. That creates a new note. So you just said create new mem. Yeah. Based on with that title yeah. of what you just wrote. Yeah. And so there's nothing in here per se. So we can basically drop placeholders and we can also say, okay, where did I even think of this idea? The other thing that's cool about this is now I can also reference them. So this was like kind of our initial outline. What does this provide you? So there's this connection. Yeah. Can you can you pull content from one place to another? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can I can basically go, I mean, think about like if I wanted to find a quote to continue whatever I was writing here, it's like, oh, there's a quote, you know, from Cal's book. I'm like, okay, hey, let's, you know, let's basically weave in this quote. In order to retrieve the note from the book that, you know, we have, I can just take it from there. So I didn't have to even open that note. It was just linked here. One of the core ideas in your own book was that you want to basically gather all the resources for a project in one place. I love it. Right? <laughs> And so there is basically the quote from your book. So you can see here that this is a note from Cal Newport's book. This is my idea on the root cause of inefficiency and knowledge work, which we just talked about, linked to your concept of gathering all resources for a project so, in one place. So we can speed up this process. So these are those, those trails, those pathways yeah, you're saying. Instead exactly. Of, instead of, oh, I have this random isolated idea. Every time you type the at symbol, yeah. it's it's proactively surfacing pre-existing content. Well, there's that. And if you have a thought, you can also capture that. So one of the things that's interesting, the reason I say this is organizing information, the way it's organized in your brain is you effectively title your notes the same way you would title your thoughts. If I realize there's no note there, that means that I just had an idea that I hadn't captured before. And occasionally you'll think of something and you'll realize that it's already there. So it's an externalized mirror of your first brain, which allows you to take this knowledge in all sorts of different directions. Yeah. Right? Because what we know from, you know, some of the research that Annie Murphy Paul did in her book is that that's one. 
I'm having a conversation with you about these ideas, but one by one, we're just connecting. We're assembling like a new, a yeah, new artifact. Mean, what does someone need to know, for example, to start right. using this? So what we've done is you've just seen how to create a new note. Uh -huh. You've seen how to connect notes to other notes. Uh -huh. So there are a couple of different sections. So there's going to be your home screen, which basically is a chronological view of all your notes. That's the AI feature. We'll get to that. These are notes that are added by you. So you can you can set it up so that, for example, you know, when you're on the go, you have you know the ability to just send yourself a text message. So here we can add different integrations. You can set this up so that you just add your phone number here. And then whenever you're on the go, Mem is like a contact in your phone. Could we demonstrate that? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say. There it is. Oh, there you go. Think about how often ideas come to us at, you know, times that are not particularly convenient or, yeah. you know, time. So think about all the ideas that go to waste and imagine every one of them. Not only that, the way it filters, you know, you can see that it was one that was sent by text. You can also, in addition to that, you can set it up so that you can forward emails to mem just by saying save to mem, save at mem.ai. Then you have, you know, basically some filters here. So for example, let's say that we wanted to filter this down to notes that just have quotes in them. How does it know? Do you have to tag it or something? No. So the syntax of the quotes, see quotes look like this. Uh... So it automatically knows that, okay, this has a quote. That's, you know, one way. And then of course there are a bunch of other different filters. You know, you can see PDFs, open tasks, videos, GIFs, and all that kind of stuff. The funny thing about Para and Mem, Para becomes almost more a way of thinking than it does an actual necessity yeah. inside of I've Mem. I've noticed this. Even, like, if, even, even if you don't use Para folders, you can use Para as sort of a framework. Yeah, exactly. What kinds of collections do you like to keep? Like, what is a reason to keep a collection? So this is actually a really good question because this was one of the, the things I learned from that article you wrote about tagging, right? People are, they overuse tags. Um, and so when that idea of tagging by context came up, I, I realized there was, you know, for example, if I wanted to group things by context, it was like landing page copy. I don't necessarily say that, hey, this is, you know, about this. So let's see, for example, we just redid um, the entire Maximize Your Output course so that it all is interlinked and takes place in MEM or, you know, testimonials. It's like a kind of information. So they have a feature called similar MEMs, like MEMX is what they call it, right? Uh -huh. And it works associatively. So what it does is based on the content that is in one note, um, it will show you related notes. Actually, let's bring up my interview with you. So you'll see here on the side, what it's gonna do is anything that, you know, is tagged here. I mean, we can push that and it'll show it up and, and, you know, open it on the sidebar. So this was our like best of 22 series. So all the transcripts that were included in that series. So this is automated. You this is completely you, automated. There's you didn't no, have to do any work for this. No, so, but but here's the thing. That is a feature that don't, that gets better the more you add, right? Because uh -huh. it's working associatively. So it has to have something to associate with. Every piece of information is collected. So you have similar titled mems and then you have similar mems where the content might be Interesting. similar. Interesting. Yeah. And then these are all the mems that I mentioned your transcript in. So you can see oh, here. I see. You know, that's the backlink. Is there anything else that's need to know? Any of the basic functionality Let's before do, we dive Yeah, into so that? one last piece of basic functionality is search. One of the things I noticed with search in other note-taking apps is it gives you only the top layer in the search results, right? You notice how here it's giving us sort of a granular view. We're actually seeing inside the content. You would never create a folder if you have no intention of putting any files in. Here, you can create notes with nothing in them and they actually have tremendous value. I have notes that are connected to hundreds of other notes and there's nothing in them. So this note, it's mentioned by 150 notes and there's literally nothing in here. It's almost like a tag within itself. The main function of this note then is just kind of collecting all those connections to So other. here's the beautiful part. This actually probably will be a perfect way to you know demonstrate the AI features uh -huh. of MEM. The thing is it has um, contextual awareness. Mm -hmm. That's not built into most note-taking apps. It understands what is actually related mm. to this note, mm. you know? And that's one of the cool things about this. I'm gonna say write four paragraphs. Okay, so there we go. Basically, it's explaining this. So it probably is using some of what's already in here, mm -hmm. but let's take the, you know, let's do this. We're gonna basically make a modification here. So you highlighted the text you mm -hmm. wanted to deal with, yep. click the little red uh, symbol for AI, and then give it further instructions. Yep. What do you mean by context? It knows internal context, external context, social context, current status, which is correct, by the way. Well, I, I derived <laughs> that from your, because I thought of that sort of terminology for my own needs. Mm -hmm. So now what we can do is we can replace that. Now let's do one other thing.
I mean, this is, this is a funny thing, right? So I love it. I love it.